Well, I'm absolutely delighted that we've got this uh, Rembrandt painting. It's the first uh, painting by the artist ever to visit Hull. And for that reason, it's a very special thing. Remarkably, by this stage, he was kind of mid-twenties, but he was already kind of at the peak of his career and his fame. He was doing incredibly well. He was at the height of his artistic powers, really, at this stage, so very much sought after. He would have received many commissions and been very much in demand. Christopher Wright, a scholar of Dutch 17th century work, he identified this notebook written by a British um, engraver and antiquarian called George Vertu, and it was written in the early 18th century. And within one of his notebooks, his 14 notebooks, is a tiny paragraph of just a few lines where he references the fact that Rembrandt was in Hull and York um, for a period of 18 months or so between 1661 and 62. Christopher Wright had uh, researched the documentation on Rembrandt in Amsterdam and there is a gap in the documentation for Rembrandt being in Amsterdam at this time. So the suggestion is that by this time, 1661 to two, you know, uh, 30 odd years after the painting of this amazing work, uh, Rembrandt was having a lot of financial difficulties. So you would have a motivation to escape creditors in Amsterdam by coming across to Hull. We're in High Street, so this was the main street when Rembrandt came to Hull, if it did come. This is where the merchants established themselves along the River Hull. Um, Hull was then imagined as one of the big European ports connected to the trade that was uh, taking place around the Baltic and around the Low Countries, around the Netherlands as well. So some of the merchants living along here were becoming incredibly rich and, and powerful. The significant people would have been people like the Listers and the Maesters and uh, the Blades and families. If he did paint in Hull as well, which there is speculation that he may have done, they would have been um, commissioned by those, those people really. When you look at the old maps, you can see that the town had a, a massive wall around it, all built of a brick. It did look very European as a as a town. It had just recovered from the Civil War. The town was really heavily fortified and, and defended. And lots and lots of little medieval streets as well that were still around, still are today, that you can still wander around. And in fact, um, that period, the 1660s, there was a lot of rebuilding going on in the city. Some great houses like Wilberforce House probably dates back to that, that period. Um, just off High Street where we are, there's a little alleyway opposite the Black Boy, and there's a house called Kroll House, all built of brick by the same builder who built Wilberforce House. It actually has the date, 1664 on it. The grammar school was still around, that is uh, near Holy Trinity itself, and that's got the date of 1583. And of course, the two churches, Holy Trinity and St. Mary's, just off the town you had the Charter House, which is still around, although a lot of that had to get rebuilt after the Civil War because it had been very badly affected and uh, and I said the activity the smells you know the sailors in town the shipbuilding and um, there was just a, the beginning of the whaling industry as well so it's so lots of lots of activity down high street especially there would have been inns and taverns ale houses imagine all the sailors coming into a port like Hull so you had to provide uh, that form of entertainment. A lot of the agents from the Netherlands and from the Baltic would be based in Hull. So in terms of international and European recognition, it would have been been highly, highly known about. And it was a you know it was a, a very important trading port. So it would be quite a cool to have a have a, a painting done by, by Rembrandt. <laughs>